Welcome to the Information Systems for Business podcast. I'm your host, Craig Van Slyke. The main purpose of the podcast is to augment the book, Information Systems for Business, and Experiential Approach by Franz Belanger, Craig Van Slyke, and Rob Crossler. The book is published by Prospect Press. Before we get started, I want to give a few disclaimers. The podcast purposely omits many details in order to get to the high points of each chapter. So listening to the podcast is not a substitute for reading the book. Each episode contains my view of the most important points of each chapter. Your professor may have a different view. The podcast is solely my responsibility, so any errors are on me, not my co-authors, your professors, Prospect Press, or my employer. Enough of the disclaimers, let's get to the good stuff. This episode covers the most important points from Chapter 9, Protecting the Confidentiality and Privacy of Information. Even if you think you're posting something anonymously, it may still be possible to de-anonymize the data in a way that identifies you. The focusing story for Chapter 9 discusses how this can happen. For example, researchers in the United Kingdom developed a statistical tool that could identify 99.98% of individuals from a supposedly anonymized data set. This is done by combining bits of data to identify someone. Also, anonymous location data is not difficult to link to specific individuals. How many people go to your school multiple days a week, then return to your home for the night? Probably one, you, and maybe your roommates. For this and many other reasons, you need to have some understanding of how to protect your digital privacy. The main purpose of Chapter 9 is to help you understand various threats to information privacy, along with the methods for protecting your privacy. In addition, the chapter discusses some ethical aspects of information privacy. The chapter begins by defining information privacy. Next, Chapter 9 discusses information privacy threats along with some consequences of privacy violations. This is followed by an overview of some technologies and solutions for protecting your privacy. Privacy policies and seals are discussed next, followed by a description of the role of government regulation in protecting privacy. Mobile information privacy is discussed in the next section. Then Chapter 9 covers some ethical issues related to information privacy. The chapter closes with a brief discussion of the relationship between privacy and security. Here are Chapter 9's main points. Privacy of information is the confidentiality of the information collected by organizations about the individuals using their services. A broader definition of privacy is one's ability to control information about oneself. Whether you know it or not, you've probably suffered from violations of your information privacy. Many information privacy threats exist, such as unauthorized collection of data, which occurs when someone collects data about you without your permission, unauthorized secondary use of data, which is when some party uses data about you in ways beyond the use you agreed to. For example, when you provide your email address to a company to get a free download and they use it to spam your inbox with ads or offers without your permission. Improper access to data happens when someone who shouldn't have access to data about you gains access to that data. This often happens due to a security problem. Inaccuracies or errors in data are also a threat to your information privacy. Data collection threats mean that data can be collected, aggregated, and analyzed at an increasingly faster pace and in ever-growing volumes. Often this data collection occurs without our awareness, especially when using mobile devices. Cookies and clickstream data are two common means of unauthorized data collection, although they both also have legitimate uses. Cookies are small text files that store information about you or your computer when you visit certain websites. These cookies can be used to track your activities, and cookie data is often disclosed to third parties, often without your explicit permission. Clickstream data gathers the IP address of a computer and identifies web pages that that computer visits, the order in which they are visited, and other data. One of the most dangerous consequences of privacy violations for individuals is identity theft. There are some things that you can do to protect yourself against identity threat. Many of them boil down to being careful about sharing personally identifiable information, that's information that can be used to identify you, and taking precautions to keep accounts secure, such as using strong passwords and not reusing passwords. See the book for more details. Organizations that fail to protect the confidentiality of their customers' data can suffer both financial costs and harms to their reputations. Three technology-based ways to help you protect your privacy are using privacy settings in your web browser, cookie managers, and anonymous browsing. Most companies have privacy policies, which are statements that describe an organization's practices with respect to their customers' privacy. 
According to the Fair Information Practices principles developed by the United States Federal Trade Commission, privacy policies should include notice and awareness, choice and consent, access and participation, integrity and security, and enforcement and redress. See Table 9.2 to see how these map to common privacy policy elements. Privacy policies are considered a form of self-regulation unless they are required by law. Because of growing privacy concerns, more governments are creating regulations to protect citizens' information privacy. Some examples include the Children's Internet Protection Act and Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, known as FERPA. If you're in the U.S., you're probably familiar with this one. The European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, known as HIPAA, and more recently, the California Consumer Privacy Act of 2018. Mobile devices are especially prone to privacy violations because data is often collected without your awareness. To protect yourself, follow these steps. Only download apps from recognized app providers like Apple App Store or Google Play. Pay attention to settings that limit what data apps can access. Be especially uh, aware of these after updates because sometimes uh, updates can reset some of your settings. Install security apps, especially for Android phones. Secure your lock screen with a PIN or password. And avoid public networks for anything sensitive. Privacy is considered an ethical issue. Richard Mason, way back in 1986, created a famous ethical framework for the information age called PAPA, P-A-P-A, that includes four components. Privacy, accuracy, property, and accessibility. Uh, See the book for some descriptions of these. Even though this framework was published in 1986, it's still applicable today, maybe even more so than when it was published. See the chapter for the PLUS, P-L-U-S, method of making ethical decisions. Well, that's it for Chapter 9. As you might imagine, protecting your privacy is really important, and there's much more information in Chapter 9. So, eh, you know what you need to do, don't you? Thank you. Okay, that's it for this episode. Remember that you still need to read the chapter since the book has much more detail. Did I mention that yet? Fortunately, we, the co-authors, worked really hard to keep the chapters short and to the point so the reading shouldn't be too bad. Talk to you next time.